Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and today I want to speak to you about the joys of making a film, as not only is it a brilliant medium to convey your message of love, revenge or loss, not only is it a unifying piece of art that might be enjoyed time and again, but it's also a place where you can just hide all sorts of nods and easter eggs just for the hell of it. I mean, you've got to amuse yourself somehow, right? And when, I don't know, say Josh flubs his lines for the 300th time, you might be tempted to change some LEDs in the background of the scene to make the shape of a male member in order to highlight another dick on set. Who can say, eh? Well, certainly the filmmakers on this list thought the same as they included tiny details in their scenes which upon re-watching are so utterly brilliant that they deserve a mention. So let's crack on as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 10 movie details you totally missed the first time around. Number 10. Don't Trust Gary Game Night no one expected Game Night to be as good as it was, but this smash hit comedy ticked all the right boxes with audiences with its brilliant and quite frankly mind-bending plot. Plus, it contained one of the best rug pulls in recent memory, with the reveal that Gary, the lonely neighbour of the piece, has set up most of the events of the film in order to exact revenge on being left out of previous Game Nights. If you had a keen eye and looked elsewhere while being shown the scene with Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams making out, then you'll see a massive gift giveaway to the film's big twist. On the subway, you'll see a small LED box which announces via text, Don't Trust Gary. It's a brilliant little treat, and one that's made all the better when the end credits detail how much effort Gary went to in order to exact his revenge. Number 9. Pennywise Everywhere It Chapter 1 I will never be able to look at Bill Skarsgård again without being creeped out now thanks to just how utterly brilliant he was as the role of Pennywise. However, it's not just the intensity of the performance, it's actually the sheer amount of times that Pennywise sneaks onto screen without your brain recognising. Take the library scene, for instance, as if you look in the background while Ben is researching some books, you'll see the librarian adopting what can only be described as a power stance, and this is just the tip of the grease-painted iceberg, as after Ben gets hurt and is being patched up, the mural behind the losers depicts Pennywise hiding underneath a car. And best of all, though, is when Richie confesses his fear of clowns, and we actually see a real clown on stage just messing around. Nothing too sinister, right? Well, the clown is actually being played by Bill Skarsgård, which, when you know, makes this so, so, so much more creepy. Number 8. John's Backwards Watch – John Wick the John Wick movies pride themselves on their commitment to slick filmmaking craft and possess an eye for technical detail. Well, for the most part, uh, I mean, those suspiciously quiet guns that he had in John Wick 2, they were a bit weird, right? But one minor yet fascinating detail relates to Wick's watch, which for the most part he wears reversed, with the strap facing outward, while the watch face itself only visible on the inside of his wrist. Now, what this does is showcase subtly how well trained in combat Wick is, as it makes it easier easier to read in tight situations, makes it less likely to be smashed on any exterior surfaces, and most importantly of all, ensures that the glare from the watch face won't give away your position to enemy combatants. Now, while it might look strange at first glance, it's actually another bit of brilliant world building that cements just how badass John Wick really is. Number 7. An Actual Praying Mantis – Avengers Infinity War there's so much going on in Avengers Infinity War that you can't really be blamed for missing all the small details that are packed into each of the film's ludicrously dense shots, but here's a cute little treat for anyone paying attention to the criminally underused Mantis. When Star-Lord and company head to nowhere to intercept the Reality Stone before Thanos can acquire it, Mantis hilariously sneaks through the hallway while adopting the defensive stance of her namesake, the Praying Mantis. Better still, Mantis actually does this a number of times throughout the film, but it's generally when there's so much other chaos happening on screen that it effortlessly fades into the background. However, once you notice it, it becomes a brilliant little side joke to a wonderfully charming character. Number 6. Jigsaw's identity is spoiled early on – Saw The first Saw movie is best remembered for its masterful sleight-of-hand ending, its brutal but not too over-the-top gore-fest action scenes, and a surprisingly decent outing from all of the cast involved. Now, one of the biggest twists is when it's revealed that John Kramer, aka Jigsaw himself, had been playing dead this entire time as part of his deadly game. Yet, what's interesting to note is that you can actually see who Jigsaw is earlier on in the film if you're 
are looking at this hospital scene at the right angle. When Dr. Gordon is doing his rounds at the hospital, he briefly stops off at John Kramer's bedside. Now, on first viewing, this scene is of course completely innocuous, but if you look at Kramer's sketch pad on the right-hand side of the frame, you'll see a technical drawing of what is very clearly the reverse bear trap which Amanda is placed in by Jigsaw. It's gruesome stuff and definitely highlights how callous his medical staff were seeing him as they not only talked about him in a condescending and clinical manner, but they ignored these detailed and disturbing images. Number 5. The Shining Carpet Toy Story It's not much of a secret that Pixar loves to pack their movies with Easter eggs and references to both their own movies and wider pop culture as a whole, but this sly homage to Stanley Kubrick's horror classic The Shining would have likely passed by younger viewers and even some adults in the audience. Now, In Toy Story, when Woody and Buzz are attempting to escape Sid's house, the upstairs carpet is patterned in a style extremely similar to that of the iconic carpet throughout The Shining's Overlook Hotel. Now, this is obviously done to convey the same sense of dread and foreboding that Sid's house has alongside that of the hotel, yet this isn't the only time that Kubrick's psychological horror masterpiece is referenced in the Toy Story franchise, as in Toy Story 3 you can see numerous images of the numbers 237, aka the infamous room in which Danny and Jack encounter one of the hotel's previous guests with, well, let's just say mixed results. Number 4. 25 plus 25 equals 50 miles an hour Speed Speed is one of the most beloved and quintessential action movies of the 1990s, starring Keanu Reeves as a cop racing to prevent bomber Dennis Hopper from blowing up a downtown bus filled with passengers. Now, the issue is, though, is that the bus that Reeves is on is fitted with a bomb, and if the bus drops below 50 miles an hour, it will explode. It sounds as dumb as it is amazing, and it's pretty bloody amazing, let me tell you that. But did you ever notice the significance of the bus's model number, 2525? It's surely no coincidence that 25 plus 25 is 50, that is some classic maths there from Jules the Professor right there, the very same number that proves so pivotal in fact to Spee's ludicrous high concept setup. The number is even literally spoken aloud in the movie as if to beg the audience to notice it, and yet, 25 years on, it's still largely missed by most. Number 3. An Unexpected Returning Character Terminator 2 Judgment Day Now you might remember the darkly comical sequence from the first Terminator where the villainous T-800 commandeers a police car after knocking an unsuspecting cop unconscious. Now That cop is played by none other than William Wisher Jr., a friend of James Cameron, who contributed additional dialogue, that is his actual credit, to the movie, and also co-wrote the film's novelization. Amusingly, Wisher reappears in the sequel, this time playing a man possibly a tourist who comes face to face with the new T-800 and the T-1000 as they battle through the Galleria. Now, fans have since suspected that these men could in fact be the same character, though Wisher unfortunately confirmed that he only played the photographer after the original extra intended to play a Japanese tourist missed his flight. Either way, there is no reason for Cameron and company to debunk this and deny their fans their own headcanon. It would even make an interesting story of a man forced into early retirement after a big bang on his bombs by Arnie. Number 2. Mr. Bobinski, Chernobyl Survivor Coraline Honestly, this film is something sublime. One of the best animated pieces to come out in recent memory, and a project that told a stylish and emotional tale of a young girl, Coraline, and her strange adventures within her new house. Now, To call this film a labour of love would be a massive understatement, as Coraline carries an exceptional level of detail in every one of its props, and one need only look at Mr. Bobinski for proof of this. Though the medal that he wears on his chest is never clearly explained in the movie, it is clear that it means a lot to Babinski given that he never removes it from his person. But closer inspection reveals that it was actually a medal that's based on a real-life award given to the liquidators brought in to clean up the 1986 Chernobyl nuclear disaster. To date, it remains the only medal awarded for participating in the cleanup of a nuclear accident, thank Christ. Yet tragically, many of the liquidators suffered from debilitating physical and mental health issues in the decades following their heroism. This may well explain a few things about Mr. Babinski, namely his blue skin, but above all else, it's a fascinating piece of character shading that's both totally unnecessary and so easily missed. And number one, M. Bison is a gamer. Street Fighter, the movie. 
Street Fighter the movie may be terrible by any conventional metric and a film that is just so bad it's good for the rest of us, so therefore it's impossible to blame anyone for not noticing small pieces in this title. Side notes, I actually love this film, especially Raul Julia's M. Bison performance, of course! And it is Bison who this final entry centers on, as if you look carefully at the scene in which Julia shoots Jean-Claude Van Damme's stealth boat, you'll see the control panel that he's using is none other than a Street Fighter 2 R arcade cabinet. It might only be on screen for the tiniest of times, but it popped me large when I saw this pristine joystick layout, and also because it would most definitely explain why all of the shots miss, because I cannot think of a less responsive manner of activating cannons and other traps than this. And there we go, those were 10 movie details you totally missed the first time around. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, but before you go, there is one detail that we should always try and address, my friend, my good, good friend out there, and that is our own mental well-being. Whatever you're getting up to today, whatever your walk of life, I hope you are well and that you succeed in happiness, love, and support. As always, I've been Jules, and go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. You have been awesome, and never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!